Hello friends, welcome to Inspire Maths. In this video, we shall explain to you the skis principle, also known as a sandwich theorem or, or pinching theorem. And this theorem is mostly used to solve different limits and involving trigonometric functions. In order to understand this theorem, let me consider two functions, gx and hx, with the condition with two conditions. First condition is that gx less or equal to x for all x's. The second condition being that if a is in the a domain of gx and hx, then limit x approach to a gx is same as limit x approach to a hx and let it be equal to l. If we look at a graph of these two functions gx and hx with these two conditions gx is less than or equal to hx and their limits at a is same as l then it's, their graphs will be something like let me first draw the coordinate system here the x-axis and the y-axis suppose that this is the point a now if this is the graph of gx then the graph of hx will lie above the graph of gx because hx is less or equal to, sorry greater or equal to gx for all values of x but at the point a these graphs has to meet because their limits uh, are same at the point a so the graph of hx will be something like this let me take a here now we will take another function apex with the condition that this apex lies between gx and hx for all values of x this is the graph of hx so if we have to draw the graph of apex then the graph of apex will lie between gx and hx as it lies between gx and hx so it can come from here, here, or here, or here, from anywhere in between hx and gx. But when it reaches near a, let me use a different pen. When it reaches near a, it has to pass through this. Such that the limit of apex at a is also equal to l. If this is l, then the limit of hx, gx, and apex at a is same as l. It is just that we have hx and apex, we are pinching apex and hx together at a point a, then they meet at this point, and then we are placing the graph apex, a function apex, and its graph in between hx and gx, so it has to go through this pinch so that its limit at the point A is same as that of hx and gx. Therefore, the conclusion is that limit of x approach to the point A apex is also equal to L. So, this leads me to the following statement of the theorem. So, here is the statement. So here's a statement that I be in an interval having the point A as the limit point and let GX, uh, G, F and H be three functions defined on uh, every point of I except a possibility at A because we are looking at the limit of apex GX and HX at A. So these need not be defined at A but has to be defined in the neighborhood of A. Then suppose that gx is less than equal to fx is less than equal to hx for every point uh, x belongs to i except at a. And suppose that the limit at g uh, of f, uh, sorry, g, uh, limit of g at a and limit of h at a is equal to l, then limit of f at a will also be equal to l. In order to understand it better, let me do an example with the help of Ski's principle. So let me wrap all this and let me switch to an example. Note that this hx is said to be the upper bound and this gx is said to be the lower bound. 
and moreover the skis principle is used not only for functions but also for sequences so in order to better understand it let me take an example here so here is an example in an example we will consider fx to be equal to x square sine of 1 by x and we will look at this limit when x goes to 0 that means we have to look at a limit x goes to 0 of x square sine of 1 by x we know that sine x always lies between minus 1 and 1 and so does sine of minus sine of 1 by x therefore the solution will have minus 1 less or equal to sine of 1 by x less or equal to 1 if I multiply x square on every side it will become minus x square less or equal to sine of 1 by x less or equal to x square because I am multiplying x square with this, this as well as this. So this minus x square is less or equal to x square sine of 1 by x is less or equal to x square. We see that this is here f x, uh, this here at gx, this at x, and this here at x. We also know that if we find a limit of this x square at x goes to 0 and this both the limits at x goes to 0 will be equal to 0. That is, limit x goes to 0 of minus x square equal to 0 and limit x goes to 0 of x square equal to 0. Therefore, by Skid's principle, we will get the result to be limit of x goes to 0 x square sine of 1 by x will also be equal to 0. Now if we look at a graph of this x square sine of 1 by x and see how its limit is equal to 0 graphically then let me have the coordinate systems here. This suppose the y axis, this suppose the x axis. Now we see that the x square sine of 1 by x lies between minus x square and plus x square. So the graph of x square is just like this, this is a graph of x square. The graph of minus x square is just like this, this is minus x square. Now this x square sine of 1 by x has to lie between this x square and this minus x square. This graph goes like So at the point 0 there is a pinch this x square minus x square and the graph x square sine of 1 by x all are pinched together such that the limit of all at a point 0 is equal to 0. We can do many other examples um, with the help of the sandwich home. We shall discuss more examples in the future videos. Thank you for watching this video and thank you for supporting Inspire Maths. Keep watching and keep learning. Thank you once again.